Welcome to the second video for our video blog feature. Now, quickly, what is video blog that we have added? Basically, we are creating new blogs, which has videos and the lab that we are going to perform. It's going to be also available directly inside the blog. And you can open this by clicking on it or right click on it and open a new tab. And you can see that we have a video here and whichever lab we're going to use it's gonna have the button here and you as a premium or light member can open this lab now do remember light members only get access to the sandbox so if it says sandbox then you will be able to open that lab if it doesn't say sandbox and says premium then you will need to upgrade your membership now in this video we are going to go further than just installing a domain we're going to cover many Active Directory related tickets that are important for a lot of IT professionals. So if you watch this video and you practice uh, the, the tickets all by yourself doing it hands on, you're going to be very confident on Active Directory basics as an IT support professional. Now you must be asking this question that why are we doing this session? Now remember when you go to uh, job descriptions, you're going to come across Active Directory uh, pretty heavily because this is this is a very in demand or hot terms or a skill that everybody will be looking at if you are going to be hired as a IT support professional. These titles are mainly used for Windows environment uh, where they're using Windows machines and solutions for Windows. And you can see I just did a term search and it has 6,000 uh, you know keywords that, that came up with almost every title going back to the IT support or help desk positions Yes, Active Directory can be used mainly in systems administration just job descriptions as well But when we talk about Active Directory training for users at the support level We're only talking about managing users their username password changing things adding groups uh, and then you know working uh, sort of management and then troubleshooting as well so when you know about Active Directory uh, at a good level this means you will be having a good time with troubleshooting because you understand how things are connected and when you understand in IT how things are connected you have a very good uh, way of troubleshooting things because you understand everything from a very core level so this is why you need to take this lecture this lab and the practice seriously because this is a very very uh, good skill for you to learn for uh, getting a job in interview uh, doing well in interview and also doing better uh, on the job because you're going to be less stressful so now let's jump into our sandbox lab and then start the practice on some demo ticketings and uh, just kind of make scenarios that we can perform some ticket all right so there are two ways again you can click on the sandbox on the left side right here and then open the launch the sandbox once you click on it this will open the sandbox and then you will launch the sandbox just like you did in from the first video before this video you did this whole part uh, with us and for this uh, uh, video you're going to do the same process now keep in mind in this video you may see the screen a little different than what you're seeing right now the labs are the same like PLAB DC01 every single thing inside is the same all of these labs will be the same the layout might look a little different and that's just because it was an older layout but these devices clicking things and moving around every single thing will be the same the devices or operating system didn't change only the layout changed while we made that video so don't worry about that as long as you follow the steps inside the video everything should be the same my recommendation is that in one tab you should leave your lab open like this and then open a new tab and then go back to the video where you're going to watch the video and perform it so let's go here to this section and then you are basically watching it and you can move this let's say hide the panel you can even move this video like you know on the, on the right side you can pause the video and all that sort of things you can do while you have it open side by side if you have two monitors it's even better so go to your domain controller click on domain controller it is going to open the server in a second so once your server is up and running click on start and then click on server manager and now you have a domain controller with active directory already running active directory users and computers this is where we need to do our training 
So let's get started with just basics of Active Directory. Even if you would have opened your Windows 10 machine and you install the RSide tool and let's say you do that process, you, you say, look, I don't want to do this server. I want to just do it again. I, I'm going to go and uh, install the RSide tool from my previous video and I'm just going to do it on that. You are going to see the same screen. Uh, there's no difference. So the first thing you need to understand that a lot of companies, when you start working with them, it may not be as generic as this. This is when you uh, develop, let's say, you, when you install a domain controller or uh, Active Directory is fresh, there's nothing done. So basically, it's going to look like this. This is a default way of how an Active Directory will, will look. So these are containers, and you can do a lot of research on that, and these are organizational units. There are some limitations on this type of folder. You look at this, this folder doesn't have any dot. Uh, here, here it has an icon inside. So this is OU, organizational unit. This is container. So containers have some limitations. OU also have uh, limitations. You can uh, apply certain things on uh, you know, OU level and certain things can be done on containers. So make sure to go and research more. That is if you want to become a sysadmin, then you can take our systems administration courses to understand more about Active Directory and how it works. In this training, we're not going to go into um, Active Directory settings or things like that. We're going to learn how as a help desk, when you get a job, everything will be already there. You're not going to implement this whole thing. Then if you are going to do that, consider yourself to be a sysadmin. So now everything is there for you. And the first thing that we will learn in Active Directory is basically how to add a user. Very simple ticket. This is going to be an HR. This is going to be a coworker. This is going to be someone in your team that will send you an email or a ticket that the ticket will say, hey, help this. I would like to add this user into our company. And this is a title and I would like you to add. So let me show you one example so you have a little better idea on how a ticket looks like when, when somebody call you to add a user in Active Directory. So a real ticket looks like this. People will send you uh, a direct email. Let's say Kimberly first day uh, in this company is on Monday, April 30. Please set up her computer, Outlook, phone. Her office is 321. Is it okay if I schedule a time for orientation and things like that? So this is an Active Directory ticket. But let's say you didn't have any knowledge about Active Directory and you look at this email. It doesn't say anywhere Active Directory. So how would you know that this is an Active Directory ticket? This is why when you do a training on Active Directory, you automatically know that because when you work in a company and they say, we do use an Active Directory environment, and let's say you get a ticket like this, then you know that this is a new user. I need to set up the first and last name is that, uh, you know, in front of you. And then you need to also set up a computer for that user. So that uh, additional, this is additional skills that you have learned in part one and part two of our courses, like how to set up a whole computer from scratch. And then, of course, there's a Windows skills in there too, like you're setting Outlook in there, applications. But if you look at it, it also says her office is 321. So you also need to know where in Active Directory you need to put this number. So then, because Active Directory is connected to other applications, HR applications, Office 365. So then all of this information gets synced over because that's how companies have set up most of their environment. It is integrated with Active Directory. So in this next ticket, this is actually coming from a ticketing system, not using an email. So if you know about ticketing system, which you're going to learn from our courses later on, or maybe you have done our short courses, you already know about ticketing system. It's like a system that somebody will put a, a template and a template basically is already there. So this person already used a template and then all they said that to update this director title from Director of Health Core Policy Coding and Reimbursement. So it says update, update the department as well, go, government affairs and public policy cluster. So then how do you know that this is an Active Directory email? Uh, even though on the top, the template actually says that. Um, the following information you on you profile is pulled directly from Active Directory, which is managed by IS. So this template is telling this user that this is going to be updated in Active Directory. But sometimes they may not know this, right? They may not have templates and then you they, you will see something like this. So how do you do this type of ticket as well? Um, and then of course, more and more 
tickets can come like this one can we please have a title update for these three people can and then you will have people like uh, their their machines will be locking out or their uh, sorry their users will be locking out how do you basically deal with lockouts issues so there are many other things that you will be dealing in active directory and it, it's a regular thing it's a regular process for people that are going to be calling you for different scenarios related to active directory so if you were to go back to the first ticket and we wanted to add some sample just like that just how would you create a whole brand new user adding all these things so let's just do a practice on that adding a user and then we will understand everything uh, visually so we may have a very basic ticket on adding a staff member vendor or whoever that person is that needed to be added to the active directory so we have this basic ticket to start this training let's say we have Stacy Smith first name last name and the job title is marketing manager and the office is 349 let's say we got this through email or ticketing system so if you are using for your practice a generic active directory I mean of course you will be learning a lot of other things on how to add groups and everything but for now let's say you just want to learn how to add a user in active directory so after adding this user this user will be able to log into any other domain join machine so to add this user there are multiple ways you can add this user now when you right click in this little white space inside the user you can click on new and click on user another way to add an active directory is to right click on user folder new and user the third way is by clicking on this icon right here create a new user it just saves you one click now the another way is also to use PowerShell uh, command line uh, we're not going to touch that right now we're going to do this later on because those are little advanced skills first try to do this on a, a GUI because this is probably the easy way for you to learn so if you want to add this user of course there are other things that you need to understand when you click on user it is going to come up with this uh, you know window so the first name and the last name is definitely going to be what you receive from the email let's say Stacy Smith so we're going to type in the first name Stacy and then Smith now this is the important part as you can see the domain is already there so for you it's going to be the same way now this is where you need to talk to your manager or your company how are they using the naming convention it could be first name last name it could be first initial last name and different ways people have this setup because people some people have thousands of people of course you cannot just use a first name and last name if you have thousands of thousands of people because there will be a lot of Stacy Smiths so you will have to talk to your uh, manager for that and that will be given to you when you start working in this company this will be a training that that you will receive from them so S Smith is the one that we want to use so I'm gonna click on next now again on this screen you will also talk to your company how are they using password convention is it something that you need to change it for every single person even if it's a temporary password or can we use one temporary password and everybody will be set to reset the password as soon as we add them so if I add a password right here in most of the companies 99.9% .9 of the chances are that you will be checking this and let user know you will either work with the user directly on the phone or maybe in the office and then they will change their password to their own uh, whatever they want to put out there so this is important this is where they will ask you questions what is the complexity how many letters and um, some people may get stuck we will talk about this in our next session when we talk about group policy because some uh, setup some things you need to even learn more now when you start working and learning about Active Directory so this keep a note that we're gonna come back to this where do you find this information we're going to learn that in next section so here of course uh, you will uh, check this and then you will click next for now we're not checking this just for this lab purpose the only thing it's doing is when you log in with this user let's say on Windows 10 machine if I log in with that user it's gonna prompt me to change the password immediately 
and then you will finish. And that's it. This is how you add an Active Directory account if it's a basic ticket like this. But it's not ended over here. If you look at it, it says the job title and the office number. Now this is where then you need to now learn about how to manage a user. You will right click on the user, then you will go into properties. Now in properties, you can see that there's office information right here. So we can put 349 and this is what I was talking about that when you start working in Active Directory, sometimes the tickets could be very basic. Like some will, will move from one office to another office and they will just create a ticket. Hey, can you add my 349 to 350 because I just moved to a new uh, place. And then the rest could be descriptions and things like that too. And for you to change the, the, the title, usually it's in the organization. Basically, you will copy paste whatever a, uh, you know, the email says that to add this or type it there, marketing manager or, and if there's a manager in this group, maybe they may ask you to assign that. Why is that? Because some application use this and it connects to pull the reports for the manager. So it will be, and then you will click on apply and you will click OK. If there was a department, you will also put the department and that's it. When you click, when you click on that, you have completed this very basic ticket. So this is how you add a user. In next ticket, we will learn more about Active Directory. So the next basic ticket is creating a group. This is another one that you're going to come across in most of the companies. Now do remember that even groups are created uh, ahead of, uh, you know, in, in most of the companies, if you if they're hiring you as an entry level professional, you don't just go out there and start creating groups in their Active Directory environments. Uh, a lot of it is managed. And even if they have to create a group, it could be a policy or you have to go through some sort of uh, you know setup or process or you may ask people that why do we need this group or someone will kind of tell you exactly why or how to create a group in their environments because they want to manage everything pretty nicely and neatly so again when you see a ticket like this for this lab purpose that's why it's so simple we're just saying marketing and create a marketing group but do know that it may not be that simple this could be a lot of just back and forth so Naming convention is going to be given again to you. Uh, they may use some sort of, uh, you know, initials in front of groups or to, ma to manage groups in a different way. But for simplicity and to learn the skill, you just need to know how to create a group in Active Directory. This could be a simple interview question. How do you create a group? Just like how do you create a user? So you can do it two way. You can right click on the user uh, container and then you can click on groups. Groups, sorry. Or you can go to this white section, new and group, same way. Or here you can click on the icon, click on new group, and then you will see the group option. So we will keep it simple for now. We are going to create a group in a container, which is, remember that doesn't have a dot on top of it. We'll come back to that later. And if I click on group right here, you have multiple options. So this is important to understand. You should do a little bit of research on Google in Microsoft documentation, what is an Active Directory security group? What is an Active Directory distribution group? Now to keep it simple, uh, a lot of people use security groups for more uh, security type of, uh, you know, um, situations where you have to implement, let's say a folder and you have to create a, a group and then that people in that group can do certain things. So it's more granular and a lot of people will use security and that could be any other applications that requires a little bit of more uh, control on that type of groups. Now distribution group is is a basic one. It's mainly used in exchange for email purposes. It's like a one way thing. You add a group and then people will say, hey, add 15 people in this group so we can send this one notification email to everybody in this group. So do a little more research because it's not that simple. Some people have a lot more explanation in documentation with examples. And this could be an interview question for you as well, even though this kind of gets back to a systems administration, but you still need to know the basics. Now, global, universal, do domain, local, you don't need to worry too much about this because the more you get into this, the global will goes into domain level and the the universal is going to go to a, a kind of multiple domains in a different uh, you know van setup so if you're going to go into that then of course you're going to start touching forest uh, you know local domains 
multiple domains and things like that you're going to come across a lot of active directory things that you don't understand at this point so for now just keep it global and for this video purpose we're going to keep the security group and later on in different uh, when we get into more advanced trainings in uh, systems administration we're going to come back to these and then build active directory and do all that sort of stuff on server level so for now all you got to do is this information uh, when you're new to IT um, you don't touch this and you ask this this is more of like you go and ask a coworker, ask your manager hey what group should we be using for this and they will let you know what to do and you just have to not type the name of this group I said this was your task just to add a group round or in test so here you go you added a marketing group and you click OK and now you have added a group so you see there are other groups already came with Active Directory which is something we don't need to go now but these are all the groups security groups that comes with Active Directory and each group has its own uh, access so if you want to make Stacy Smith a domain administrator of this whole environment which is a very big access then you can do that because you have these groups available now but once you add a group then of course uh, they will ask you to add someone to that group so the ticket could be very simple that you will have a ticket say hey uh, can you add Stacy to this group because she just joined our company or multiple groups right so to add a group to add a user in a group then you right click on the user go to properties and then click on member of so if you click on member of you see that Stacy by default is a part of domain user everybody will be a part of that group because that's how the domain users log into the machines but if you have added this group you click on add and this is a searching area for active directory where you can check names you can look for objects you see the groups right there and if I click on OK you see marketing is already there now and if I apply then now Stacy is a part of marketing and that ticket is over so this could be only this ticket meaning that uh, the group was already there you joined the company and somebody sent you just this ticket right here add Stacy Smith to marketing group you came here you did that part if you are doing this from a group uh, site so you can go to the group directly double click on the group and then click on members and here you can actually add Stacy by searching for Stacy she's right here and you can add it and click apply and uh, Stacy is added to the group that's another way and you can see what the group uh, options are over here so in this ticket number three uh, we will be creating an organizational unit now again uh, you as a help desk or IT support professional in the beginning will never be creating organizational units or container this is just for you to understand at the very basic level when you see something like this in your companies for example when you have an active directory which is a generic active directory that gets built immediately when you create your server these are going to show up so as we mentioned before these folders with no uh, icons inside are uh, containers now containers um, is not something that a lot of people use to manage their environments because there are limitations on containers uh, containers you cannot apply group policies now of course there are some tricks and things that people will do but uh, a lot of people avoid using a generic structure like this and the reason for that is that this is just for old school or old application they're used to seeing users in users right so if they have an application built a lot of people target this container to to do something with it so in the in the companies people don't do this uh, you know if they have to if they have a users they will create an organizational unit inside this active directory environment so how do you create an organizational unit this is just for practice and if you're asking yourself this question that this is advanced or you don't get it then I highly recommend go to Google type uh, Active Directory organizational unit versus container container versus organizational unit and do an extensive research but again your learning skills for systems administration if it gets too annoying leave it there and stick to your uh, lab over here and learn uh, just adding things and moving things in Active Directory so to add this organization unit uh, we're going to click on the domain now and we're going to click on new and here you will click on organizational unit so when you click on it 
you will get this option and here we are going to add this marketing and again the naming convention is already done by other people but for your practice you can just type this and then boom you just added this organizational unit now and then of course uh, here you can add a user you can uh, add a group everything can be managed in this organization unit the the benefit of that is that next time if we have to deploy something to a whole environment let's say i have 500 groups and i want to manage it in one organization unit and i want to apply some policies on top of these 500 groups that may have 5000 people then i can just do that from this one area this is the power of management and that's why organization unit when you go to a company you may see a lot of things like this where it's going to say staff desktop staff users marketing marketing sales uh, you know there's going to be tons of tons of groups all uh, right here and then it could be managed even internally it can be managed more so you can have an organization unit and then another organization unit so it's really up to a company how they develop their whole structure that's something you will not touch but let's say my job is to for you you got you got this ticket that uh, our systems administrator is sick today or maybe this is a ticket hey can you move stacy smith and marketing team to the marketing ou organization unit so the way you can do this by right clicking on it move and then you can click here and now i can move it to that uh, organization unit and now it's moved I can do the same thing for the group. I can right click here, sorry, move, and then I can click here and marketing is moved. So now we are managing everything that has to do with marketing is moved. If, uh, let's say you have uh, one uh, OU for a lot of users, just users, like you add the users in one OU, uh, you could do that by right click, go to organization unit, staff, and maybe that's our OU. And then I want to make sure that all of my staff members are in one staff or you because maybe I want to move it. So you can drag and drop it like that. And then if I want to keep all the groups in OU, everything here, if I apply security options because it's a security group and I then apply a, a group policy, then a lot of things can be managed that way. So again, the whole purpose of this ticket is to show you how to move things and how to how OUs are created. But remember that this is not going to be your skill set to do these things. It's going to be already there for you. Now, the ticket number five could be also related to the whole ticket where you have to add a Stacy account in Active Directory and then you have to create a whole uh, machine. So in a work group, uh, sorry, in a work environment, when you create an account for someone, uh, I'm sure they will also require you to create a um, some kind of machine, laptop, desktop, uh, however, they have set up their environment. If it's an Active Directory environment, uh, it's a domain network environment. You learned that in our previous uh, lecture. So please go over that to understand the work group versus domain. So here in ticket number five, Stacy also needs a computer. Now, if you look at it, we have a computer already added to uh, this Active Directory, which is PLAB Win 10. So if you want to practice Stacy's machine, and you want to log in as Stacy, then this is the machine that is already added to Active Directory. If you wish to create and add a new machine in this lab, you can also use PLAB 101, which is a workgroup machine. And all you have to do is to uh, use your skills learned from the previous courses and lectures. You can go to the system. And in the system, you can go to the system information. And then here you will click on change settings and then click on change and add this machine to the practice labs with the uh, administrator username and password that you have in this lab. So th then it will be added to this uh, Active Directory environment. But since Win 10 is already added, we don't need to do that. All you have to do is to click on this little key icon, auto log on devices on, and then click on this connect right here. So this way you will test Stacy's machine so of course in reality you are gonna have a laptop or desktop Stacy's gonna come that day and she's gonna say okay you know what I'm gonna log in here this is how I log in and it was a uh, Stacy Smith and we created the password and um, of course this is not uh, you know, done correctly so for example um, in this lab environment uh, when you use this access this is a remote access remote uh, services is being used 
So for that, you have to do extra things. But in reality, the way you want to practice is that you're going to go back to this lab and, and scroll up and then use the console access. I just clicked on here. So this is how a real desktop will look like, um, and not a remote desktop anymore. This is like you're sitting in front of that machine. So now if Stacy come over here and she's in front of that machine and you want to test that user, let's say S Smith, and then we want to put the password. So now you see Stacy Smith, it automatically detect the Stacy Smith name from Active Directory that you have created. And now it's going to log in uh, as Stacy. Now after this, other things can start, right? Stacy can say, I need a application, I need this, I need that. That is just a uh, normal Windows 10 and a, uh, and a company related skills. We're going to go into that later on in different sections. But this is how you, uh, you know, uh, work with a machine. Um, when, when in this lab, you, you have the capability to, to, uh, you have added Stacy and then you can come and practice on Stacy's account. And how is it going to look like when, when a real person log into these different type of uh, systems? So then, of course, Stacy will start working. And the next step, next tickets will come after when Stacy actually starts working and then. Uh, Stacy or somebody else uh, who's working in a domain environment is going to come across issues and that's where you need to st still learn about Active Directory more to, to uh, work with the users on Active Directory. So after some time and let's say you have a lot of users you're going to get calls in on Active Directory something like this. I forgot my password or I, my account is locked out so for this one uh, this is going to be I forgot my password. Let's say this person went on a vacation or something happened they came back and they try to log into their machine now and they forgot their password. They tried multiple times, but it's not working. So they pick up their phone and they start calling you. Hey, I need now because your your machine have the RSAT tools where you have Active Directory or if you're using this lab, you have you're on the server, you're going to open Active Directory and you will find Stacy. Now, if you have 5000 people, of course, you cannot just come here and just look for Stacy by S. You have to use features like searching. So here I'm showing you another skill how to search a user. So let's say you want to search somebody in an entire directory. You have a very large environment or, or you have multiple domains and you want to do a whole directory, then you will pick the first one. If it's one domain, then you can search Stacy in the whole domain just like that. It's going to find Stacy. If you right click, you can actually do things from here as well. So if you do it that way, you can do it that way by finding a user. But let's say they're on the call. You will right click on Stacy's profile and then here you will help Stacy with the resetting password. So this is a skill that, that everybody will ask in the interview question. Do you know how to reset a password in Active Directory? You can simply say yes, you can go to Active Directory, find a user, right click on the user, click on reset password. And then of course you will be uh, using this uh, um, option because you don't want to give Stacy a password and then forget it and Stacy will never change it right so I can come over here and I can give Stacy this password right now but Stacy must change it at the next logon so let's see didn't meet okay we didn't do it correctly So now Stacy password is changed while she's on the phone. I'm going to say, okay, Stacy, can you log in again? Can you try with the, the temporary password that I just gave you? So Stacy is going to come over here. She will put the temporary password and then she will log in. As soon as she log in, it's going to say the user must change the password before signing it. Now this is where, again, we're going to go into next session where we have to learn about uh, the complexity and where this is coming from. But at this point, Stacy will come over here and she will add her password just like that. Now, of course, this is where Stacy can start calling you because she will put something like this and it will not work. And then there's a history, there are things going on. This is where it takes us to next session where we have to learn about group policy. So once you know about group policy, then you can answer these questions pretty nicely. If you don't, of course, uh, Stacy will keep trying again and again and until she gets something complex, but that's going to be very annoying if you don't know the, the answers to these questions. So this is something you will learn um, in our next section where we will talk about group policy. So at this point, Stacy will use a, uh, you know, um, a guided password by you and then 
uh, she will put a good complex password and she will log into this machine and that's it that's going to be our password for next 90 or whatever how many days you have assigned uh, in this company so if i put a complex password there you go i click ok and we're done so this ticket is over you're going to be good with this ticket stacy is happy and that's it you're going to move on to next now the ticket number seven is something that uh, is going to lead us to do something in group policy but you're not trying to learn this at this point you're just trying to understand what's going on so the first ticket is just resetting the password because they forgot the second one they remember their password but they lock themselves out because maybe they're putting a wrong key and things like that but to make this work you need to do this go to tools go to group policy management and this is what I'm talking about that we're not trying to learn this right now I'm just showing you how things are being managed from this area so when you go and open the group policy management this is where a lot of things can be managed and this is our domain uh, policy everything is coming from here you go to edit and when you go to the edit we're gonna go into the policies Windows settings and we're gonna move this and security settings and that's the account policies right here the password policies are coming from here and the lockout policies are not defined yet so we need for this ticket we need to enable this if you want to do the same thing you can do the same way you're going to come over here you're going to double click on the account policy and check mark this apply and this automatically says that after five invalid logon attempts uh, stacy's account will be locked out so again, the policy is coming from here. All of these characters needs to be 724, blah, blah, blah. We're not going to get into that right now. This is all group policy training. But if you want to do this ticket, then this is how you do it. So if I go back to Stacy's machine, and I'm going to go ahead and open, uh, because I logged in as Stacy, so the best thing you can do is to restart this machine. Um, we're not doing anything else right now. So restart this so the group policy is applied. There are commands you can use, but that's going to be set for our next session. So now Stacy is coming back again to work. And basically, we're going to come back to this ticket. So right now, when she log into her machine, because in companies, those policies are already set, she's going to be normally going into her machine and uh, log in. You're going to come over here. And then we're going to log in again. So at this point, if Stacy wants to log back into her machine, let's say she come over here, she forgot her password. She tried one, two, three, four, five. And look, it's locking her out right now. So when, when this is spinning, it's going to basically say this account is being locked out. And of course, Stacy is going to pick up her phone again and start calling you that my account is locked. Can you help me out to unlock it? Because I remember my password. So this is what you are going to see when you try multiple times before after five. The reference account is currently locked out and may not be locked to. So, of course, at this point, Stacy is going to call you. Now, do remember, you're not going to be coming over here and resetting her password because that's not the whole ticket. The ticket is that they do remember it. They want to try it again. So how can you unlock it? You're going to go to properties and then you're going to go to account. And in account, you see there is this unlock pass, uh, you know, account. If you check this and then click apply and click OK, then Stacy can go back and log into that machine and everything should be OK because you just unlocked that account. And that happens in a lot of companies. People don't want to change their password immediately. What if this person just changed their password two days ago and they did all this uh, syncing everywhere and you don't want to go there and just reset their password, right? So you want to give them their chance to remember their password. If, let's say, Stacy is unable to do it, of course, she's going to say, just yeah, just go ahead and reset. And then you're going to come back and the, the, the ticket will switch to resetting password then. And with that, you can also check this, just making sure that they're not locked out. So you can do this. Uh, so one ticket can turn into another ticket immediately in the skill basically it can go from properties to account you unlocked it it didn't work they they still keep locking themselves out and then you come back in 
uh, do the reset password and that should be taking care of the whole ticket six and seven uh, bot and sometimes people leave company or for whatever reason you're gonna get a call from HR that this is this person's last day please disable the account in Active Directory so then it can be disabled everywhere in the whole company so it's very simple you're going to find Stacy you'll right click on that user and you're going to click on disable account so as soon as you click on disable it's gonna have this little icon and then Stacy cannot log into this machine if they're logged in after that when they you log them out log back in it's not gonna work because you disabled their account and that's a very common practice and a lot of companies people do that because people leave for whatever reason you need to come and quickly disable those accounts because you don't want that access to be running uh, in a company act now things can go a little more advanced if you're use if you're working in a company um, I'm going to enable this account. If you're working in a company uh, and they're using Active Directory heavily, uh, you may be taught. Now, this is not something that a lot of people expect from a new person, an entry level person, to be having that kind of knowledge. So, for example, sometimes you will go to properties and you will work in this area. Sometimes some people use scripts. When somebody log in to their profiles uh, in their network, they may tell you to put a script so that runs every time they open their profile now that scripting that path and everything will be given to you you're not going to be basically doing this by yourself and sometimes they may ask you to connect a home profile and everybody will have some sort of profile uh, home profile home folder sorry connected to their profile now this is not a very common thing in a lot of uh, medium-sized companies it's maybe something that people have done but because it, it kind of creates this a lot of uh, network overhead uh, on these profiles so it, it really depends if the company have done it great then of course they may use it but there's a lot of different solutions that people come and use it this is something that's been there for for a while and that just came with Active Directory uh, and other things you guys will notice that you're gonna get a call from uh, changing the last names is another one so make sure when you change the last name because people get married and things like that so you need to make sure that you have a proper understanding or ask your co-managers or co-worker if I change this name the last name where else do I need to go in uh, in in my systems to change the last name because this is a big thing you, you change the last name uh, these profiles are already created on the machines this could break a lot of things so just make sure that you know if you come over here and you just change this last name it may not work in your environment because things may not be set up correctly so this is another advanced area that a lot of people are going to come and change things um, another area that you're going to work on uh, if it gets more advanced um, some people will be basically coming over here uh, let me just go here and advanced features so when you click on this you see more um, uh, containers and uh, things will come up and that's uh, something that some people do use it and you may not even have access to this by the way but let's say you do have access you can come over here and let's say we go to the marketing OU and you right click on uh, sorry you're going to staff right click on St Stacy's and go to properties you see you have more um, uh, uh, tabs available and uh, in that case a lot of time we use this um, editor where uh, basically when it comes to changing things uh, uh, advanced way or you need to change something you can actually come and edit these values and that's why I said that it's important for you to understand because some of it can go back to exchange and you may have to add an alias or things like that um, and, and you can come over here and do the, the, uh, that sort of things but again you're not as an entry level person you will never come over here and you're going to open something like this and just change some kind of value of course you're going to break a lot of things if you do that so this is just for you to know if somebody is working in a company and they say hey uh yeah in the attribute editor can you add an alias then if you have some kind of knowledge over here you came over here you will remember okay this is and then you can ask them okay you know what which which one because if this is something advanced i don't feel very comfortable doing this can you let me know what do I need to change over here or do you have an example then they will let you know yeah you need to come over here and do this 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 and that's it you just one time do it and you learn it and that's your skill that you have learned so another basic task that you may be given is to a lot of moving we already discussed that you may well be also doing a lot of computer moving because even though uh, they may have some kind of script set up or a way set up for you to add computers to a computer or use or if it's here they may say can you move from here because we don't want it to be in a container computers it has to be somewhere else so you may have to 
move these to another OU. For example, I just want to move this OU to marketing OU. Uh, and of course, this message is important because if you don't know a lot of uh, how Active Directory works, then just moving things is going to break things as well. So just know that you can ask these questions to your co-managers or co-workers when you move something like that because there are policies that may break uh, in uh, for other people. All right. In some companies, you may not even have access to the Active Directory tools. Now, you must be asking this question, then how do I help people? Now, this is where you can learn something extra now. You can learn a different companies have created different products, uh, pretty good products that are well known in the market. And I like to do this practice with you all because you can use one, you can say on your resume that you know about Active Directory now, you can add RSAT tools from previous lectures, and now you can add this external product that is kind of known. These companies are known to IT professionals. So when you say something like this, that shows that you have experience. Even if it's a lab environment in JSS, that shows a lot of experience. So how can we do that? Now we, we are going to create, the first thing we need to create a, an account here uh, in Active Directory just so we can make it a little more real world. So let's say we are going to create an account uh, in this uh, domain controller. So let's go ahead and log into the server Active Directory. And we are going to open Active Directory in Tools. So here I can go to Tools. I am going to go ahead and open Active Directory Users and Computers. And let's add a uh, uh, Help Desk account right here in Staff. We're going to create a Help Desk account. And then we are going to give it a domain admin rights because you learn how to create uh, that right so let's go into help this and that's the username we're gonna keep the generic password okay we created a help this account we do want to give this a domain admin right so how do you give it domain admin rights or administrative rights go to properties go to member of and then we're going to add this help this as a domain admin. So now you see how I added this to, uh, user to domain admin group and now we are going to click OK. So in this machine we can come over here again and we can log off from Stacy and we can log in as Hubdesk uh, user. So when we log in as a Hubdesk user we're going to click on other user Hubdesk And we log in with help this account because it has a domain admin right so this is a pretty powerful account right now so let's assume this company is not letting us to uh, use our SAT tools that you have learned before in our previous lecture and they're saying that you need to use this product that we're using because this company is well known and we use this web product and to do this practice you need to do one thing you need to go and open browser and let's download that tool and let's see if it's gonna work and want to configure everything from scratch so you may see something like this um, where there there's no internet connection even though it says that you have internet connection but that's because of the DNS so we're gonna go ahead and change that by doing this step right here and we're going to click on change adapter options right click on Ethernet go to properties here you're gonna go to TCP IPv4 and here we are going to uh, basically move this um, um, to let's say um, 8, 8, 8 and 8 and we're going to say OK and then basically close the Ethernet after doing the OK and then refresh your page um, it should start working there you go so now we need to download uh, something that we need so the first thing we want to download on this machine is this um, uh, Google browser so let's go ahead and do that first you can do edge as well uh, the one that is in front of the screen but uh, I like to use Google uh, just for this whole uh, training purpose so we're going to do Google download and you may get this uh, message you just accept that and then we're going to continue with the installation so if you see something like that again uh, we're gonna go ahead and type Google dot com and download Google Chrome 
and maybe I clicked on it wrong before. So let's go ahead and click on download Google. There you go. You should see this basically. And we're going to go ahead and download Google and run the installation on this machine. So now we get a prompt here. We're going to run that and install the Google Chrome on this machine. Now the reason I am installing new uh, browser because now we're going to use a web-based application to manage Active Directory and that's how some companies will already be using Google or something more famous uh, browser like that. So the application that we need to uh, look for is called Manage Engine Active Directory Plus or AD Manager Plus, sorry. So we're going to do manage, we're going to type manage engine AD. So that's the AD Manager Plus. We're going to go ahead and click on that and search for that application. We will click on agree and we're going to scroll down and find the right link because the first links are ads you can see that here you see we have AD manager coming up right now so we are going to click on download and it's going to take us to this page now so here accept all the cookies and we want to download the 64-bit how do you know if this is a 64-bit machine you should have learned this in part one course uh, that we teach in JSS so if you click on system and scroll down there you go it says 64-bit uh, operating system so we're gonna go ahead and click on the 64-bit version software and now it's downloading and let's let this download finish and then we'll come back to this again now this process can take a while so another suggestion if you wanna remove the time for this lab this means if you have a web browser open and you left your machine you can still uh, keep this machine running by coming down and turning this accessibility uh, option on so if you click on this you see that 60 minutes will start if I turn it on it will uh, stay there this session will stay but just remember that when you close your browser and you come back to it it's not gonna stay anymore uh, you will lose that connection so leave your browser open if you are doing a long uh, sessions trainings and since in this scenario I think it's important because when you're downloading the practice lab internet speed is very slow so you'll have to kind of uh, make sure that this is uh, turn on and just basically come back later on when everything is downloaded and you can continue the training. All right, once the application is downloaded, we're going to go ahead and run this application as an administrator. I right click run as administrator and we're going to set up this application again in companies. This type of application is set up by administrators and you will have limited access through a web browser. So even if you don't have uh, RSAC tools or direct access to Active Directory, you will have access to this uh, software through a web browser and then you will be doing a lot of things as you can see it just tells you what to do uh, it can do a lot of uh, advanced things without you having extensive knowledge uh, through PowerShell so this is why a lot of people use these type of tools to make things easy for their help the staffs so now we're gonna go ahead and click yes and click next and port 8080 is fine this is the port that we're going to use to access this through the Chrome browser that we have installed uh, we're gonna go ahead and say skip to this registration click next again and let this run so we can finish this AD manager plus and again why are we doing this remember if you're going to apply for positions then use these names because that matters we know these applications we use it heavily in the companies big companies and when you start talking about AD manager plus and things like that of course you look cool and that is experience you kind of counter that uh, experience on the descriptions and that's how you counter it you say I know these things now do know that we're not being sponsored by these products these are third-party products the only time the only reason we're using this is because a lot of companies are using it a lot of IT professionals are using it just like Active Directory these type of tools are very common so when you talk about it uh, it just puts more value on your resume and your skill all right, so once it's done, you're going to uncheck the first one, start the AD manager. Uh, we're going to click on finish. So what will happen, it is going to open a web browser. Um, as you can see, it just closed and then it's going to start opening a web browser. Uh, let's see if it's going to use a Chrome or uh, uh, Internet Explorer. If it doesn't use Internet 
uh, Explorer. So let's see which one is it going to use. We're going to go ahead and cancel that and wait for it. So, okay. So it's going to ask you for this little um, check mark. Go ahead and allow access. And this is the icon of AD Manager Plus. So here it's going to ask you, what do you want to use? So I'm going to check mark always use Chrome because that's what we want to use. That's why I installed that because uh, if we try to use an old browser, then uh, these applications usually don't work. Now you see that it's using a web browser, P P Lab Win 10 8080. So in your environment, it's going to probably have a real name or maybe if they use a DNS or something like that, they may have something like AD Manager or Password Management or they may just have nothing, just a server name. Uh, of course, you as a help desk will not be installing this. Just make sure that you guys don't do that in a real environment. Don't go there and try to install this whole application because then, of course, that is going to be a red alert for security guys or uh, admins or IT managers that why did you install an application like this on your machine because it does go back to the Active Directory and it can do a lot of damage. So this is for you to just practice on your machine, but in reality, a lot of people just like Active Directory is installed on a server, this will be done on that level by somebody in your environment. So you're going to get the admin and password for the first time. You're going to go ahead and log in with that username and password. Uh, and then of course you don't want to save that. Here, uh, basically this is where things will start. Um, so what we're going to do here, basically you need to configure a domain for it to work. AD Manager Plus is very powerful. It can do uh, Office 365 too. Later on, we will discuss that. But for now, we want to stick to Active Directory. So the first thing it's asking you is to put the domain name and add a domain controller. Or you can show no, no, no DC is available. You could do a discovery now. But because you, since you didn't put a domain name, it cannot find anything. So the first thing you would do is to type the domain name just like that. And this domain name is, remember, coming from your Active Directory. If you go to Tools, I just went to Server, Domain Controller. This is where the domain name is right now, right? So you're going to go back to your machine and then do Discovery now. And now it's going to look for PracticeLabs.com. Now, if you look at it, the cannot be discovered. Now, the reason for that is why? Because remember, you changed the IP address. So we're gonna go. We're gonna have to go back and put the DNS back in there because we don't need to download anything else now. So we need to make sure we scroll down uh, in this lab. Let's go ahead and do that, and uh, let's go down a little bit. And here we're going to right click, go to uh, this, and and don't forget this option because if you if you forget these things, uh, none of these options will work uh, correctly because that's how uh, this whole uh, you know system is working. So we're going to go to change adapters, right click over here, go to properties, and then go back to IPv4 and change it back to 192.168.0 and I think, I believe it was 6. If you're not sure, go back to the domain controller, I do IP config. Let's go and do that. I'm going back to my domain controller, IP config, and this is, oh sorry, it's 1. There you go, that was my first mistake. So we're going to go back and fix this, go to properties and go to IPv4 and fix this, change it to one. So now we are back to our domain controller. And if let's say we don't have to restart this, I probably don't have to restart it, but we can do discover again. And there you go. As soon as I added that IP address, PLAB DC01 is my domain controller right here. It found it because I'm, I'm actually using a right uh, ID as well. Like I'm logged in as help desk account which is a domain admin account and that's going to let me do all these things so i'm going to add this domain and here it says um, uh, authentication so when you click on authentication uh, basically uh, you can add authentication or you can try to add here and it will use your computer um, you know login right now that it, that you are already using so when you have when you see success here this means that the, the username uh, that you're logged into this computer is correct user and has a domain admin rights. So now we have a full Active Directory uh, running in AD Manager Plus. So now we can go back to home and let's see what we get in home. So in home, when you went there, you see it went out there and it started looking for information in our Active Directory and boom, things are coming up. We see that three computers are there, number of users are over here, pretty nice uh, you know, way to do things. And then it has some other extra products too. You can go down 
it tells you how many groups are there so it's very powerful because a lot of people don't like to just go to these server and open applications they are old school applications now people are using something like this in most uh, environments they have a web based access and everybody can access it so in some companies they will be using something like this where you will have just a link access and you log in with your username and password and once you click on management this is where you will do the same thing that you did in Active Directory before but here you're using a web version which is a little more uh, easy to understand and easy to follow so you could practice by coming to this application by clicking on click a single user if you click on the single user you're going to get the same information uh, selected domain is this one uh, if you would have created a template then a template you can install everything from a template as well so here you see you have first name uh, uh, last name the logon everything is in there so let's go ahead and do another practice here the first name is demo we're going to say demo my last name and you see how it's picking up information for me uh, I'm gonna keep it like that demo Danny um, here I'm just gonna keep everything the same display name is gonna be this office we don't need that telephone let's just uh, put a office uh, you know three two one just like that and uh, everything should be like if, if the email was getting created then of course that's gonna be my email um, so that's all we have to do for now uh, we're gonna go ahead and click on create account it's gonna probably ask us for more information so you see user cannot create error setting password the password does not meet the password uh, so even if you are doing this application you're still gonna come across uh, uh, things like let's say if you don't put a password then it's not gonna work so of course when I click on create it's not going further you need to go to the account right here and you see um, you need to put password in there so here you can you have a little extra thing going on that you can put a random password you can type a password over here if I just put this right here I'm gonna put a password for this user and just like that and we're gonna move so that same information is presented log on uh, uh, script and some other extra things are available here just for because it's a GUI it can create a lot of things in a little different way even though those things are available but they have provided over here so if I go back and try to create an account and now you see that account is successfully created so how can I verify even though I don't have our set tool on this machine I was able to do this how did that happen because this machine was a part of domain controller so if I come back to domain controller and 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 I basically refresh and go to users we can see that the demo account is created right here so this is the powerful tools that I'm talking about when you are working on a web-based system like this and if this if we had a local exchange server uh, you could also create a full mailbox with this user if it was already added to our uh, domain controller now in most companies uh, they will have some kind of template already created so you can see there's a little green icon uh, the green button with a template so people use this type of uh, you know templates so if I go back to management you can see you can modify single user you can modify bulk user you can modify user using template um, so try to go in there maybe if you guys can learn something more this is more advanced stuff now and let's say if a user is locked out you can unlock a user from here you can reset their password if it's just a single uh, management you can see if let's say uh, you type a username if I just type that demo user and search for it uh, it's gonna find that user and it's gonna say that the account is uh, is enabled or locked you can uh, try to do like unlocking the user you can click here and unlock that user so this is how people are using this type of products uh, maybe sometimes they may say can you run a report and then you can use these reports like password report and maybe uh, password expired users or recent uh, logon failure um, or let's say user with password never expired a lot of people run this report to find out uh, who is in this uh, whole network that have this never expired because that's not allowed in security systems so some people will just say hey can you why is this person uh, like this or they need to change this password or maybe somebody uh, password is expiring in a day or two and they have to leave country or for vacations whatever the reason is there's some automation going on and people get emails on daily basis when they get uh, their password reset is near let's say five days every fifth day fourth day third day people are gonna get emails please change your password because once if they don't do that they get locked out and of course it creates more calls for help desk and this is why this type of products these type of product 
third party products are out there who are basically uh, good for this purpose that people are using it heavily and that's why when you put these names on your resume people know that you are a little bit of ahead of just basics in ad like you're not just a person who did a home lab created an active directory and added a user that's it and reset the password now you know a little more than that level uh, even that's good but now you know more and that adds more to your experience so of course we cannot go and try to do all these things right here this is up to you how much time you want to invest into this and learn more uh, i would say yes spend some time get used to it because this is what people are doing uh, um, in their companies uh, try to import bulk users and play around with the templates because if you go to a company and they have something like this then i think that would be the best uh, scenario for you and you will be very uh, much uh, in less stress because you know these things now lastly if you want to go beyond this you want to learn more advanced then of course you can look for more tools just like ad manager plus that can do more than just adding and doing process related work in active directory you can find tools that can do troubleshooting in active directory and that could lead you to downloading some other tools that we don't know yet or maybe on the internet that's available so give it a try it's uh, why you have this sandbox but of course we will not be able to uh, uh, talk about it or support or even uh, have conversation on it because we have we have not touched it we have never seen it we cannot talk about it even these tools we don't support it if you remember sandbox lab is not supported by anybody neither jss or I, uh, the the practice lab support over here we only support the devices here we do not support any products inside sandboxes so if you go into let's say you want to go a little more advanced um, and uh, the last thing i would say just go and go to microsoft documentation and type how do you add users uh, through powershell in active directory so powershell comes with uh, you know the domain controller comes with this one powershell module for active directory for windows machines when you can install rsat tools it comes with modules these days as well uh, don't get into that kind of things that if it's not working then just stick to the D, uh, dc the domain controller and then open the powershell module like this and simply um, go to um, documentation for example if i type it add new ad and if i just type this and put a tab in here you see i can add a user right there and if i put a name um, let's say i want to put a name in there just like that and i say um danny demo 2 and if i give it a name like that of course you need to put it in quotation um, if you want to do that so i'm going to do danny demo 2 and if i enter you see that that name is added Th that's just to show you a, a kind of a way how quickly i can add a user without clicking on multiple things and people when they want to learn things in advanced way people go with powershells and that's where uh, people get more and more experience with this and you will find out that okay if i can do it th just by this i can probably create a whole script create maybe 1000 users in active directory whatever it is i'm just giving numbers out there so if i if i type you see danny demo is created by disabled so next find out how can i enable it how can i add a title to it how can i add a email to it so by doing that you will you will also learn some sort of uh, command line but of course that's not our goal from these courses yet because that's something we want to touch in systems administration a normal entry level have this person don't get involved in this kind of stuff if they do it's just the company is asking them to do it and that's great uh, but that's not required